Now I've received quite a few requests to focus one of my monthly brand reviews on Tevi and I totally get it, especially if you've only just discovered the brand in the past couple of years. The price point is much higher than say something like Everlane or Quince who I've talked about on my channel before. So most items are probably going to be a serious consideration and a huge chunk of your seasonal budget for your closet. I figured this video could be a really good frame of reference in terms of just talking about sizing, a discussion around the fabrics and the fit, and also so you can get a sense of how some of the woofs fit on me. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Tibby, Amy Smilovic is the founder and creator of the brand, and I have to say, I think she is a marketing genius. Starting her IG lives with stylist Dion back in 2020 at the start of the pandemic, I think was a brilliant move. It really showcased the versatility of the items and also I think allowed you to get a real glimpse into how these pieces might fit into your own closet. Just in the way that they would share multiple outfits with each piece, which I think is something that many of us maybe struggle to sort of think about when we're in the changing room. But also there were a lot of Easter eggs in a lot of the items that you can purchase from the brand and they would unpack those also share a lot of really useful styling advice like big slim skin, bigs and pigs, PDW, uh, woofs which are without fails. I will leave a link to the Tibby dictionary down in the description box below because I think that's a really good um, sort of starting point and if you aren't familiar or haven't watched the IG lives you can go back all the way and watch them from the very start if you want. They usually run an hour long though so there's a lot to get through if you want to go through the entire back catalog. I think how this video is going to work is I'm going to first start with a try on and I'm going to talk through all the individual items that I have here. Some are in storage and I just couldn't find them. Uh, our storage unit is chock-a-block. After that I'm going to talk through the items that I think the brand does really well and the ones that I maybe don't particularly find work for me or that I don't think they do as well as others and then I'm going to talk a little bit more generally about Tippy. So my thoughts and feelings, is it worth it to spend so much money on these items, that sort of info and I will have some timestamps here on the screen of uh, the different categories of items that I'm trying on and then also these different parts um, within the video Video. and I will talk a little bit about purchasing from Tibby living in Australia because we're very limited from where we can buy from. All right, so let's get into the try on portion of this video, the good stuff, and then we'll get into everything else. Starting with tops, this pleated number is one of my favorites from the brand. This is from almost three years ago now, I believe, and it is in a polyester because pleats will only hold in a polyester fabric. The Pleats are really nice and tight and I love the way that they flute out at the hemline. This also has a drop shoulder effect which makes it feel even more interesting and the way the sides come up as well just underneath the arms gives a lot of coverage which I appreciate. It's ever so slightly sheer so I'd wear a skin toned bra with it. This next top I purchased on sale and I do have the matching skirt. This is sheer which I love and it also emphasizes the fact that it has the shoulder pads. I'm wearing this in a size 4 though this is a little bit larger than I would normally take in Tibby and it does mean that it has a super dropped shoulder effect which I really really like. This one looks really interesting when worn with denim in particular. The fabric is quite delicate so I need to be really mindful when I'm wearing it that I'm careful not to snag it. So. One thing to keep in mind is just because an item is really expensive doesn't mean that it is going to be more robust. You will find that more delicate fabrics tend to have a slightly higher price point, so you do need to be careful with them too. The shoulder pad tank is one of the core styles from the brand, and this hand spun woven yarn is probably my favorite fabrication that they have done it in. It has so much dimension and texture. There's almost this grid effect to the way it has been woven, and I really like the slightly pale yellow color of it as well. It's just nice and interesting and a great way to elevate a basic tank. And they do this in tons of different colors. The next two tops are the same, just in different fabrications. So the first one that I have here is very, very textured. This is a polyester base, and then it has this cotton sort of fringed effect on it, which I really like because it makes it feel a little bit more interesting, definitely from a visual perspective. I love the peplum tops that Tibby do every single season that they bring them out. I think they're really, really nice. This one has the racer back effect. It's fully lined. I have these in a size two, by the way, and I would say that is 
kind of my standard size for something like this. Um, I really liked wearing these when I was pregnant because they concealed my bump quite nicely. The other one that I have here is in a silk and silk is definitely one of the fabrications that I really like from Tibby. They use a four ply silk so it is a really nice heavyweight silk but it does work year round so you can wear it in the summertime but also in the winter too. This has a really beautiful drape to it and where I can launder the previous one that I showed with all the texture, the silk one I would definitely take to the dry cleaners when it needs to be freshened up. This next top is from the Tibby Cut Ups and this is using leftover fabric from previous collections designed in styles that they love. Um, the thing about this top is that it is really elevated, it is really interesting and I think this makes a really good office top, has a nice deep V and then these ballooned puffed sleeves. It's a viscose blend uh, and I do find that it has a really nice drape to it. I love the way that it tucks into things and this is one that I would probably throw in the washing machine as well. It is fully opaque too and it might not be that visible on camera but it is a super dark navy. I have this one in a size 4 and I think because it is more of a roomy sort of relaxed fit uh, that works for me. Okay, this top is super old Tibby and probably not something that I would expect to see in one of their collections today. When I come up close you'll be able to see the actual pattern which isn't that visible from afar. It is this tiny micro star print which is very very sweet. I like the sleeves because they have this loose sort of ballooned effect and they're not a full length sleeve so they sort of hit the wrist around bracelet length, which I think is very flattering, has a little tie up detail at the back. This one is in a silk and again, you can see even through the years, the silk quality has remained consistent. So I have newer silk pieces and they all feel the same, really nice and luxurious. And they're not that really shiny silk that almost looks like satin. This is that sort of matte quality silk that has a really beautiful sheen to it. Moving on to dresses, we've got the four ply silk bias cut dress. I like that this one has the really thin spaghetti straps and they are adjustable too, which is really convenient because it means that you can adjust the fit and I always like when you have that flexibility there. This one is cut on the bias and it really hugs the contours of the body quite nicely. I like the fluted design of the skirt as well. This one is double lined and I don't find it personally very sheer if I'm wearing skin toned underwear underneath. I'm wearing a nude strapless bra and peach colored knickers and I don't think you can see either of them. However, I will say if I go braless, then everything is on show. So word of warning, but gorgeous dress and it also came in black and I got very lucky to nab that one on sale. This next dress is one that I'm not really that sure on. This is in the combed cotton and the quality of the combed cotton is divine. It's phenomenal. It feels really nice on the hand, very kind of soft and I love the mild effect to the cotton too. I think it makes it really visually interesting uh, and gives it a lot of dimension and depth. The thing I'm not sure about with this is the way that the dress is cut. I can't find a size tag on this. I purchased it from the Real Real and it was billed as an extra small, but I don't think it is. You can kind of see it has a slight bat wing effect. The armhole opening is really, really large and it kind of creates some excess bulk around the bust, which I don't love. And I think for a dress like this, because I'm someone with a longer torso, I need it to be fitted because otherwise it ends up making my bum look really flat and this is probably slightly visible from the cutaways. I think that's why I've kind of shied away from wearing it. Everything else about it from the crew neck line to the actual length of the sleeves I love. I, it's just a fit that isn't quite right for me so I don't know if I maybe take this one to a tailor or I just persevere and style it in a slightly different way. Let me know what you think. One of the more expensive but definitely more classic styles that you will get from Tibby is the Liam Blazer. It is one of their fundamentals or woofs from the brand and I can see why. It has been engineered to be this perfectly oversized blazer with the drop shoulders. I really love the button that allows you to wear it crossed over the body. One of my favorite ways to wear an oversized blazer is to belt it or cinch it in at the waist and this already has that functionality inbuilt into the style. You can see from the cutaways here that I'm also showing you how you can bring up the sleeve length as well because it is quite long. So this is a really neat little trick and because the interior lining is the same as the exterior, it allows you to do that while having a really seamless 
finish. The inside is also lined as well uh, and it's really really comfortable to wear. I found that this is worn pretty well too. I've, I've thrown it on loads and I love the little d-ring on the back which allows you to hook it up when you're going to the bathroom and this is a common feature on all of their coats and also some of their knitwear too. These trousers are a poly viscose wool blend and they feel like a traditional wool texture. They almost have a slightly scratchy finish to them. I really love the green. It kind of reminds me of Peter Pan in a good sort of a way. And I have these in the size two. I find that these fit quite low on the waist on me. So typically I will wear them with a belt so that I can wear them slightly higher up, which also gives me the crop that I'm after in a trouser. Love the straight fit through the leg too. They're just a really good classic. The most iconic trouser style that Tibby does is their Stella pant. And I can tell you now, it is a really, really good trouser. The whole idea behind this is that it has been engineered to be worn low on the waist, but also because it has a really long rise, you can wear it high on the waist too. And that's my preferred way to wear it because when I wear it low on the waist, and I will show you some visuals, you can see that the trousers just look far, far, far too long on me. There is too much puddle going on. While I love a little bit of puddle at the feet, I think there is such a thing as too much. These ones, I do have the matching blazer, but I can't find it in storage, uh, but they're just really beautifully made. When I do wear them high up on the waist, I will wear them with a belt, or what I will do is I'll use the hooks to hook onto the first belt loop, which I find works pretty perfectly for me with the size two that I have. I think if I wanted them to just naturally sit a little bit higher, then I could go down a size to a zero, but at least I do have this flexibility. This particular style did also come with some little belts for wearing around the ankles so that you could avoid getting the hem of the trouser wet if it was raining. I think the Brancusi jean is another iconic style from the brand. These ones I have in the white, and I'm going to be honest, I have not actually worn these once. I love them. I think they're so playful and fun, but I'm not sure if it's just that my eye has not settled on the way I look when I'm wearing these jeans. And that's a really big thing when it comes to wearing a style that is different or unusual for you. These are a barrel leg jean, so you'll see they've got a bit of volume and they taper in at the ankle, almost like an Aladdin pant. I love this. I think it's really interesting. They have a lower rise. I'm wearing them in the 25 here, and I think that's the perfect fit for me. I'm usually a 26 in jeans. I'd call these more of a low to mid rise. I'm not going to wear them low slung on my hips so that I've got that, that drop because that's just going to emphasize how long my torso is, and that's not something I personally like to do from a styling perspective. I also have these on the long length and I'm gonna say, I think maybe they're meant to be kind of cropped. I like to roll them up ever so slightly at the ankle to get the cropped look with a longer length. Uh, but my inseam to the top of my ankle bone is 69 centimeters. So it's basically petite length. So just in case you're wondering whether to go with the regular or the long length, hopefully that will be helpful. This skirt I have in two colors because I love it so much. So we're gonna start with the black, which is the first one that I bought and I bought it full price and I'm regretting not waiting until the sale because I could have saved, I think 40% off the price of it. I got this in a zero because I wanted it to sit high up on my waist, but the style was designed to be worn lower on the waist. This is almost that trouser skirt style, but it has more of an A-line silhouette, which is down to this really interesting pleated effect down the center. The draw card for me here was the fabrication. It is this kind of PVC vinyl, which has a lot of shine to it and a great way to make a monochromatic black outfit look interesting. These look great with a high boot as well. The other color that I got, I purchased in the two, and this was a big mistake, especially because I wanna wear it high up on the waist. I bought this while I was postpartum, and at the time it fit perfectly, but now it's just a little bit big. So if I wanna wear it high on the waist, I have to belt it. I do find that this lighter color is a slightly softer fabrication to the black. I'm not sure why that is, but it just feels softer in the hand. So it's got more of a floaty nature to it. Same fit, same cut otherwise, and just a really beautiful color. It's almost this very pale sage green, and it goes really well with that light yellow tank that I showed earlier. This next skirt kind of feels a little bit like old Tibby, but it's got the new logo in it. This is this 
black base, floral skirt, it's embroidered. I love this style of skirt. I think it works really well for my body shape, nice and high on the waist, and then it cuts off at the perfect length. Uh, this is really beautiful and textured to the touch, and it does pop up every now and then on the real reel. This skirt matches the top that I shared earlier, and it's in that same fabrication. Because it is sheer, it does come with a slip, though I will say the slip does not provide total modesty. The slip is also removable, which is great, and I really love the functionality there because you can just wear the skirt as, say, a beach cover-up, or just say you wanted to do a real fashion look, wear it with a matching top with a bandeau and then some matching knickers. You could easily do that, and it would be very, very chic. I have this in the two, and it is ever so slightly big on me. I would have preferred the zero, so it would be high-waisted. So I have to wear this sort of lower on the waist. Uh, again, it is very delicate because it is that fine sort of meshy ribbed texture but absolutely gorgeous have not worn this one though and i really want to final skirt i have here is a classic i think tibby's been doing this one for about 10 years i remember leandra medine wearing this in the red back in the heyday i have it in a navy silk file which is absolutely beautiful it's fully lined has pockets need i say any more beautiful pleats around the waist and the length of it's really good. It has great volume as well. And this is a good skirt to take you to a really fancy event. Like maybe you need to go to the opera, you wear a beautiful bustier or some sort of really gorgeous top to go with it and some high heels. Alternatively, you can also dress it down with an oversized knit, which is great. I find this particular style fits a little bit more on the smaller side. I have the skirt in a size four and it fits me just below my natural waist. So do keep that in mind with this particular style. And I have heard other people say the same thing. So this experience is not exclusive to me. So hopefully that will be helpful for you. My Olas are probably my favorite pair of shoes from the brand and I really wanna get them in other colors. I have them in the smoke gray. The patent is a crinkle patent and it is so soft and puffy. The conical heel is really, really comfortable to walk around in as well. And I love that these give me a little bit of a height boost while still being extremely walkable. I have these in my usual size. The last and sandals I have in two colors. I'm wearing them in the black here. These are from two years ago and I absolutely adore them. I think they're a really beautiful dainty sandal. I love the fine straps and you'd be surprised these are actually very comfortable. The little knots don't dig in at all. I find that they actually stay up as well when I knot them at the side. So really good from that perspective. I do sometimes find my foot slips around in them when I'm walking though. And that is because I don't want to tie them too tight. Otherwise it just feels a little bit too restrictive around the ankle. The final shoe I have is called the Julia Sandal. And I managed to snag these from the Tibby Fans Instagram page at a really good price. I have them in the Navy, got them in my usual EU 40. These shoes are absolutely beautiful and it's all down to the crystal embellishments, which was the major draw card and the reason why I wanted to add these to my wardrobe. I will say that they're not the most practical to walk around in. The sole is incredibly stiff, like cardboard, though the leather straps are very, very soft. I do really enjoy wearing them, but they're not one that I'm going to throw on if I'm walking long distances. Now, thinking about what I believe the brand does really well, and I have to say, number one, it is tailoring. By far, that this is probably the category I think that they have nailed 100%. I love their Liam blazer. I know it's not for everyone, but I think that they really were sort of leading the charge in terms of that oversized blazer trend and it is really good quality. The fit of it has been engineered so well and you can easily go up or down a size. I also really love their trousers. And when we're thinking about something that is really trending right now, the Stella pant really leans into the fluid wide leg trouser trend. And this is a pant that the brand has again been doing for a really long time and they've absolutely nailed the fit. And I do think it's great that you do have the option to either wear it high up on the waist by belting it or wearing it lower on the waist so that it's a little bit more relaxed and eased out. And I think that's wonderful. It doesn't really work for me because I have shorter legs and I find if I wear it low rise, it just really emphasizes that. But if you've got long legs, then a beautiful trouser and I think a really good starting point if you are sort of thinking about where to buy first from the brand. I also think they do really good outerwear. I have sort of read from other people's reviews of items they've bought that the coats are lovely. I've got one of their coats and as I said, it is really, really nice, uh, really beautiful quality. And they do a lot of kind of cashmere coats, things that are really luxurious feeling. 
The other thing I think they do really well, and this is not actually a specific item, but this is fabrics. And I think that Amy and her team have really found some of the most unique and interesting textured fabrics. And I've talked about this so many times that I'm a tactile person. I love the way that things feel and I want things to feel interesting or feel nice or feel luxurious. And pretty much every single piece that I've got from Tivy really leans into that. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so drawn to so many different items that uh, Amy and her team design. In terms of what I haven't really loved or I haven't found has worked so well for me from the brand, it has to be their knitwear. I personally am a little bit funny about knits that have polyester or polyamide blended into them. I want to be able to launder my knits rather than taking them to the dry cleaners every single time. And I think when you have polyamide mixed in there you run the risk of either when you launder it even if you're very careful the texture is no longer quite the same after it's been laundered or alternatively it may shrink and so for me just with my own experience and even having bought a knit from Tibby that does have you know that polyamide in it I would probably steer clear. I have also heard that some of their knitwear is quite itchy, particularly mohair, which is traditionally quite kind of a scratchy type of knit. Um, one thing I do really want to try from them that looks beautiful and I've only heard good things is their cashmere. And I'm also really curious about their shrunken merino, but I think the kind of more scratchy, more really textured, but visually interesting fabrics I'll probably steer clear of and anything that is in more of a felted wool. I do think that this is a bit of a scale and at every level you're going to find something that you absolutely love, which sits up here and then something that isn't really quite right. And it could just be my own personal purchases. I have bought the alpaca before as well, and I didn't love that quite as much as I love my alpaca from Evelyn and I just found I got the dress and it just didn't really work for me and my body shape. I want to talk a little bit about sizing and fit. So I think the key thing here when you are trying to figure out your size in tippy is to refer to the size chart and then also consider how the item has been styled on the model because that is how it is intended to fit. And one thing Amy tends to try and reinforce in every single one of her videos is that they have a very specific fit in mind for every piece and so it will fit within your size range. So if something is designed to be worn low on the hips like many of their jeans, you're going to find that it will fit you the way it is intended if you buy your correct size. Many of their styles are designed to be worn with ease in mind which means lower on the hips or a little bit more relaxed. So you can easily feel or fall into the trap of thinking that maybe you have too much room around the waist and that would be easily fixed by going down a size and I think this is where the idea of the intended fit and your desired fit comes into play and that's also something to consider. I think this is why they don't put specific item measurements on the website and the other thing to keep in mind is that there is also a tolerance level and I think this is one inch either way. So you could buy the same item in two different colors but you'll notice that the waistband or the hip measurement is slightly different and that is just because Clothing is made by hand and there are going to be very slight variations in the fit. And this is something that I can also speak to from my own experience with clothing manufacturing. In terms of my size, I'm a 20 US 0 and a US 2. So when I consider what I'm purchasing, I think about the way I want it to fit. So with tops, sometimes I will go for something a bit bigger because I want it to be a little bit roomier or I just want to lean into that ease and that slouch. Whereas a lot of the time I find that something that is high waisted just works better for me because I do have shorter legs and I don't want to stunt them further. It just isn't something that I visually find appealing when I look in the mirror at myself. So I'm thinking about how I can amp up the, the way that I want to wear things. So quite often for um, skirts and for trousers, I will think about getting them in a slightly smaller size, especially if they are designed to be worn low on the hips. And again, I will refer to the models and also the IG lives can be really useful as well as a tool to understand what size to get. In terms of shopping from Australia, it is very expensive. It costs 65 US dollars and then if you spend more than a thousand dollars you are going to be hit with taxes and duties. I typically will shop from the sale which is when everything is kind of final sale anyway. I'll send it to my US mailbox so then I can consolidate multiple parcels or multiple items and then send them on to me in, in Australia and it will cost me far less. I just find that that is something that works better for me. I have purchased direct from the brand, both through the stylist, who I find that whole process takes a little bit of time, and I've purchased from the website. And the team have been wonderful when I've dealt with them. The website, things ship out pretty quickly. 
However, I did buy a pair of shoes that arrived and they were faulty. They had a big scratch on them despite never being worn. I hadn't even pulled them out of the box. It was the first thing I saw. When I contacted customer service, they gave me a shipping label to send it back, but I wasn't reimbursed for the shipping cost to send it to Australia. So despite the fact that the shoes were faulty, I was out 65 US dollars, which is over a hundred Australian dollars. So that was a little bit of a bummer for me. Uh, so a little word of warning. And if you are sending anything back that you don't like, which is not faulty, so you don't have that experience I had, that was just an unlucky experience, then you are gonna to have to pay the return shipping. So that's something to bear in mind as well. But there are some retailers where you can shop Tibby, Net Porte probably being the most easiest and most uh, accessible one. You can also find them on Farfetch, but I find the prices tend to be considerably higher than anywhere else. Future me here, I am jumping in because I realized as I was editing this video that I forgot to talk about one very important thing, and that is whether Tibby is worth the splurge. Now, I've said this before that I feel like Amy is a marketing genius. She is clearly a very sound businesswoman and thinks very critically about every single decision she makes for the brand, and it shows. I think that she's really tapped into our desire to be creative and express ourselves with what we're wearing. And she's been able to share incredible styling advice that is concise and easy to interpret regardless of your own personal style. And that's something I really appreciate. While I don't necessarily delve into the idea or concept of vowels and modifiers for my own closet, I can see how those can be really useful tools. And after I think she's been doing those uh, IG lives for almost three years now. I can also appreciate the need to sort of move into a different uh, focus or subject matter in her videos. And that's definitely something that's come across. And I'm personally really excited for her Creative Pragmatist book. I think it's going to be really brilliant. I feel like there are very few brands at the same price point that are going to give you the expressive, interesting, creative designs that Tibby releases every single season. So that to me is one of the major draw cards of the brand. It is a much higher price point. And as I said throughout the clips, some of the more expensive pieces are also going to be a bit more delicate. There's a dress I didn't share with you. Um, I've got it sort of almost a black uh, mesh, which is layered and it's covered in glitter. And I'll put a photo on screen. And this dress is incredibly high maintenance. Every single time that I've kind of put it on, tried it on, little bits of, of glitter end up all over the floor. And I know that in years from now, after it has been worn multiple, multiple times, it's not gonna look the same as it did when it was new. And it was more of a pricey piece. I bought it on sale. And that's something I recommend doing, especially if you're new to the brand, you're not able to maybe go and visit one of their stores or there are no retailers near you who carry the brand. Wait until there's a sale and add something to cart then that you have been desiring that is really alluring to you and that was maybe a little bit more elusive at full price. There are two sales a year at the end of the season, so I think their end of winter sale will happen in January and then their end of summer sale tends to happen around the July mark. So. If you were thinking about when to kind of bookmark in your calendar, that's a great opportunity. And usually there will be two to three rounds of discounts and they'll have an extra 10% off. So that's really how I've built up the number of items from Tibby that I own in my wardrobe. And also look pretty loved because you can get some incredible deals. Some of my favorite items from the brand are ones that I've actually purchased secondhand from The Real Real or even Vestia Collective. So definitely worth having a look. I'm um, also Poshmark. There is a Tibby Fans uh, Instagram, which I will link down below where people also share their items that they are wanting to sell. So that's a really great way to also experiment with the brand a little bit more. Personally, I am so incredibly drawn to the brand because I think it has such a unique point of view and I think the point of view is very strong. It comes across really clearly. And while I don't necessarily feel like every item in each collection would fit within my closet and within my personal style, I can always pinpoint quite a few items that I feel would gel with what I want to wear on a daily basis. And that to me is representative of any brand that I personally really love. And I've gotten a lot of joy out of wearing the tibby pieces that I do have. Yeah, just wanted to quickly jump in and say that. Now let's get back to past me who is wrapping up this video. I'm gonna wrap things up here because I know this is going to be a really long video, but I hope for those of you who have been thinking about making a purchase from Tippy, I'm gonna wrap things up here because I know that this is going to be a super long video. So 
so thank you so much if you have continued and stuck with me all the way through to the end. I hope for those of you who have been thinking about making a purchase from Tibby that this was really helpful. I will leave links down in the description box below to any of the items that I can find. I'll try and find links for other websites that stock Tibby which might be a little bit easier to shop from from a returns perspective for those of you who aren't based in the US as well otherwise you can shop directly from Tibby.com. The Real Real is also a really good place to search for old season Tibby pieces so you need to act quick because I find a lot of the kind of core items or the ones that were really popular go very very fast. But yeah thank you so much for watching. I am so grateful as always that you chose to spend some of your day with me. It is honestly such a highlight whenever I get one of your comments and I would love to know if you had a favorite piece of mine or actually what you might be thinking about buying from the brand. Tell me down in the comment section below. I hope that you have the most beautiful week ahead and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.